Hello, but I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. Now, the first question you might be asking is, Jake, why are you here right now? I told you all, all you loyal listeners and viewers out there in my last episode that I'd be gone on vacation right now. Well, I'm sure you guys are also aware I'm very stupid. I got my days wrong. I'm leaving town for Chicago tonight. So I'm going to make another video for all of you. I hope you all enjoy all the great drama today. And of course, all of today's stories will be time marked down below. Let's hop into our first big story, though. And this is actually a huge one revolving around Ty Lu slash Heroic Peacemaker. Why I say that, of course, he's currently the coach for Team Heroic. They also recently extended his coaching contract there, so congrats to him. But apparently he, of course, will be also staying in accordingly for Ty Lue at the major qualifier in the major. Why I say accordingly is because as of right now, we have no clue if he actually will play for them or force them to forfeit their matches. So it seems he took to Twitter a couple days ago. I'll give you guys the preliminary tweets, of course. He's been talking about this for quite some time. If you guys don't understand the situation, coaches who are acting as players for this tournament or for this major will not receive stickers. So, of course, the controversy lies in the fact that, of course, Zon will be playing if he does play for device he will not get a sticker and more so peacemaker of course taking a twitter about this seems a bit more disturbed he'll be, play be playing in place of ben tett for Ty Lu, and he also did not get a sticker now uh, of course ben tett he will not be playing the major qualifier or the major itself due to visa issues but he did get stickers so that's where the controversy lies and of course i don't know his monetary situation i don't know if peacemaker is making enough money being a coach for heroic if he really needs this cash because this is a big cash inflow when you get a sticker that's thousands of thousands of dollars in your pocket so I understand where his, where his disposition is. I understand why he'd be upset about this, but of course he took to Twitter just last night, very importantly, and it seems like he's openly not just suggesting, but maybe even threatening Valve alongside that E-League organizers to maybe kind of ruin the tournament here for at least Ty Lue itself. He actually posted this on Twitter, guys, and said he really, of course, publicly has stated many times he is not a player, he is a coach, but on top of that, he also took to HLTV and made this blanket statement saying, I've not been 100% publicly transparent with my things in the past, and that cost me a a lot of headache. So, about the major situation, still not decided whether I'm playing for Ty Lu or will forfeit the spot. And he also said on top of that he's going to be posting a video in the future to explain his situation. And yes, you better be doing this. I mean, this is, I'm surprised no one else is really covering this story. The fact this guy is publicly stating, by the way, I'm not sure if he's trying to force more money out of Ty Lu, maybe make them pay him more just for, uh, you know, playing that spot. I'm not really sure what he's getting at here, but the man wants his money. That is a clear situation. I'm not sure if Valve will respond, or at the very least, I think E-League should and see what happens. If he does get a sticker, I mean, it might be kind of in the contraband class. If he does get a sticker, I can see that demand skyrocketing, but I don't know what to say right now. What do you guys think about this? Should he have the, should he even have the ability to forfeit the match for Ty Lue? What is Ty Lue going to do? It's certainly going to boot, not going to boost their morale at all. So if you guys were uncertain about Ty Lue making the actual major and going through the major qualifier in the first place, now more than ever, I'm doubting they're going to even actually make the major itself. Of course, they never, they haven't uh, had really big uh, success in the past with that either, but but even after this, guys, the situation, the team chemistry must be lacking. And Peacemaker wants his money. Will he get it? I really don't think so. And also in very big news that no one's really talking about, but some big news for suggesting things in the future for SK Gaming and Immortals. I talked about this last week as well, if you guys missed that video. Hopefully you can check it out. We have Noah Winston, the CEO and founder of Immortals, actually apparently and allegedly buying the trademark rights for MIBR. That's the Made in Brazil organization name. And of course, I, I talked about the possibility of SK Gaming. Their, their contracts do expire sometime in 2018. Them, of course, leaving SK Gaming by some slim chance, they would then join up with Noah Winston and be the new MIBR team. So of course, it's a possibility, it's a slim possibility with SK Gaming probably paying those guys a ton of money, but it's a possibility for the future guys, and this could suggest uh, even more so. We actually have some breaking news. Destiny and SHZ, uh, formerly of Immortals, are now back to Tempo Storm. They first left Tempo Storm to join Immortals, and now Immortals organization is seemingly falling apart, CSGO-wise, and they have now left back to Tempo Storm. And why this is actually very curious, guys, is because it does seem Immortals is now dumping their entire CSGO roster, which maybe does allude to the fact that Noah Winston is going to drop the entire Immortals organization roster for CSGO and maybe pick up a new Brazilian roster for MIBR instead and try and restart there. So of course they are now left down to just one player. They have gone through nine players or maybe even more around nine players in about five months. One CSGO team. That's absolutely shocking. They're now left with one player that's actually ZQK. Um, so not really sure what he's going to be doing. They have Horvy on their inactive roster. Horvy is actually being sought after by many Brazilian organizations because he has a visa right now. He can go freely to North America and back to South America. And on top of that, of course, you guys know both 
Bolts is on loan to SK Gaming, but he's pretty much, he's on SK Gaming. So they are now down to one player on Immortals, and I do think, I know it's speculation, I do think Immortals is going to dump their CSGO roster entirely. We're not going to see one for a long time. I could be wrong about that, but I think Noah Winston's going to try and make a new CSGO roster on MIBR, made in Brazil, coming soon. Also on top of that, I want to talk about a very genius move as well. If you guys remember way, way back in the day, what kind of launched my channel to where it is right now, and ever since we've kind of been lingering around the same sub count, was me calling out CSGO Wild. Now, I would say I want to apologize about that, but it was it was what made my channel the way it was. I had some issues with CSGO Wild back in the day and the way they were tied to FaZe Clan and the owners over there. I thought it was a bit corrupt how they were doing it, but they have come back to the CSGO gambling scene and apparently are doing quite well and apparently doing it very fairly. So we'll see what happens with CSGO Wild. I wanted to point that out because it's not sponsored, guys, not in any way sponsored, but they're doing it in a very genius way. They've actually taken to Twitter. They've actually paid many pro players out there to retweet their giveaways. They pay people like Phantom Lord, I Notorious, maybe in the future. They've also sponsored people like Fitz already and of course Anomaly, uh, all saying CSGO Wild is back. So we'll see how long CSGO Wild sticks around, guys. Uh, but yeah, they're doing a very genius move and we'll see how it is. It's been a long time since we've seen a gambling site come up this excitingly, so we'll see and hopefully no one gets scammed. And very last in today's episode of CSGO News, I do apologize. This last story is a mouthful, so I might I might choke up here, guys. I mean, I've been coughing all, all the videos so far. So we were actually, according to Dust to Us, I'll link their website and the article down below for all of you guys. Actually, Dust to Us is always linked down below in the description for all of you who want to check out some great news sources out there. According to them, though, Splice, the organization who's been struggling in North America for the last couple of years, I, I do apologize if you guys are major Splice fans, but I think it's fair to say they've certainly been struggling, usually towards the bottom half of EPL or ESL Pro League, but they still do have that ESL Pro League spot for next season, so keep that in mind, guys. Apparently, Splice, the organization, is actually interested in XCLG. So currently, XCLG, that roster is only down to three people. It's a trio, but very importantly, they do actually have spots for EPL next season as well as ECS and those spots and that trio of people is worth a lot of money. That's actually worth a good amount of money. Of course though, whoever buys them out, buys that trio out, will not get the better half of that team which was Ricky, the offer, and of course FNS. Both those players are being sought after by other organizations out there. So if anyone actually buys these guys out of their contracts throughout 2017, they have to pay a hefty buyout price for their contracts as well as pay the price for those EPL and ECS spots. But it actually was leaked. Apparently their contracts do expire sometime in 2018. So whoever has interest in, these, in this trio could get a great steal if they wait it out. Because if they do wait it out, of course, that buyout's no longer there, but they will have to still pay a hefty price, of course, to contract those players. That majority roster does have to stick together, though, to, in order to land those EPL and ECS spots. So Splice apparently wants to allocate a whole new CSGO roster, and of course, it's kind of ironic as well, if you guys did actually see the match three weeks ago, we had a Cyber Power PC, I think it was their winter tournament, a, kind of a smaller North American tournament, but of course, Cloud9 was there. They took the entire tournament, but they actually did beat out. Uh, it was that XC CLG roster. In the semifinal though, it was XCLG who plays as Unemployed for Christmas. That's their new name. They actually beat out Splice in a very close matchup. It says 2-0 there, but both matches went to overtime. So it's kind of funny. They actually beat out Splice. Now apparently Splice has interest in that trio roster and their ECS and EPL spots. We'll see how that progresses in the future though, and if Splice will wait it out and sometime in 2018 acquire a brand new North American roster. And that's going to do it for today's episode of CSK News. I'm going to take the next two days off, guys. I am now officially going on my short, very, very short 48-hour vacation, so I hope you guys all enjoyed. Thank you all for the great likes. I know uh, gambling videos always do quite poorly on my channel, but thank you guys for understanding. I, so I thought, why not upload a, a double upload day? If I'm going to upload a gambling video, why not counteract that cringy video with a great CSGO News episode? Hope you guys all enjoyed. Thank you all for leaving a comment down below. I will see you all in a couple days. Remember, I like you, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. CEO and owner, that was Noah Winston, actually bought the rights to MIBR. That's the Made in Brazil organization title and trading right or trademark rights, and that's actually a really big... <coughs> Oh, frick.